about the 2030 paper. Why, why should we talk about 2030 today at all? Because it seems so far uh, away. We still have fantastic package for the 2020. Why, why to bother at all? Um, because the things change and uh, we will do any climate policy or not, we won't uh, to do anything uh, at, at all or not, we'll have to change our uh, power system quite a lot anyway. Um, it, it's, um, if those of you who remember reading the uh, 2050 roadmap, with the costs of the, of the power system will be quite big, almost 15% of the GDP if you look at the 2011-2050 uh, uh, perspective, and actually the cost of, of doing something and the carbonizing will not be uh, much higher, it's just the proportions change. The other, so this is, we have this internally here anyway. Um, then according to the International uh, Energy Agency, our dependency on, on fossil fuel imports is, is growing and it's gonna be, uh, now it's around 60%, it will be 80% by the 2035, which is, so basically this is money spent outside somewhere, mostly in, in, in US, in, in, in Russia, in, in oil countries. Uh, then if you want to continue the global picture, we have the other countries outside the EU. You know, we often think, well, we are the only ones doing climate change things, you know, the only ones investing. This is not true anymore. Uh, we have China, US, uh, uh, Japan, Brazil, Morocco, for instance, also investing quite a lot in, in, in the renewable technologies. And uh, so it's a little bit of this um, uh, industrial competition here uh, factor. Uh, of course, there is also important that next, um, in this year in, in, in Warsaw, <clears throat> we'll have the COP19, and then we'll have in 2015, uh, COP hosted by, by, by France, and then this, this is the dead deadline where we should have a global deal. So it would look very bad if we, as the EU, don't know what we should do uh, after 2020. And basically, if you look at any long-term analysis, you could claim, well, let's don't do anything on climate. Well, you know, we have the economic crisis, let's wait. It's the social crisis as well. Uh, until we are out of it, then we can start doing something. That's all maybe fair enough, but then the, the total bill will be much, much, much higher, and maybe some things will be undoable, uh, not, uh, not doable at all. So if you look at the um, 2020 package, I think that, you know, if, if I would be just looking at the numbers and saying, okay, so how far we are from the 21% uh, reduction target and the, and the, the e, 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 emission trading scheme, we are, you know, we have reduced about 16%, so it's fine. You know, even if the economic growth returns, uh, it, we should be fine. So, and then if you look at the specific numbers, we are okay. When you start looking at the, um, and the individual member states' performance, it's more okay-ish. Huh? Um, it, it's a little bit like the, in the 70s, I think, there was the legation of the American scientists to the Soviet scientists, and they were asked the Soviet scientists, so how is the situation in the, in the, in the Soviet Union? And they said, well, just briefly, and they said, good. No, no, but we didn't mean just one word, maybe two words. And they said, not good. So it's, <laughs> it's a little bit something like this when you look at the performance on the, on the countries. Um, uh, on, the, uh, on the renewables, there is, uh, of course, the, the big discussion now, in particular in Spain, in Germany as well, in Czech Republic, a couple of other places, about the renewable support schemes. And, and it's true in Spain, it's not sustainable from the financial perspective, right? It's, it's a huge uh, uh, tariff deficit. And this is the problem uh, there. But at the same time, if we look at the costs of the, of the, of the renewables, of the generating electricity from the renewables, it, it has, it has uh, um, uh, been reduced quite substantially. I think in the case of the photovoltaics is around by half if you look from 2005 to 2007. So this investment is delivering something, yeah? uh, apart from, from, from jobs and from, uh, uh, from, from markets here. Um, 
another problem which is very obvious all of you probably is following this, this discussion is that you know with free euro you will not i mean per, per, per allowance you will not see an investment modernizing the, the industry from the if you look just at the, at the ETS as such uh, don't ask me what is the appropriate price I know that the free euro is it's, 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 it's too low of course we have the new new game changer as it's called is the, the it's the US shell gas and then what we receive here as, as, as a, in result is the cheap, cheap US coal um, in in um, in Germany on UK you have the uh, power generation from gas going down in the last year and the from coal going up but that's that's the economics um, and then of course still we have the financial crisis we have still high high level of debts and uh, um, and uh, the the economic prospects are not so good to to to, to be honest um, so that's something to in in the background um, just a little bit more about, at the same time, so, so at that time we knew that in 2009 uh, that, uh, or before, that different member states have different ability to, or different potential, reduction potential, different areas in renewables or, or I mean, in, in, in terms of increase or in the, um, in the greenhouse gases and so on. And there were a couple of mechanisms built in to acknowledge that, uh, but also to make sure that there is a political buy-in, because if you would just approach, looked at this from the, just use the primes model, look what's the cheapest, the, the ambition, the reductions per member states would be would look uh, a little bit funny, I would say, uh, and might not be just uh, doable at the end of the day for different reasons than, than the economics. So just to uh, r r uh, quickly uh, remember what, what is there now, uh, we have the differentiation of the non-ETS targets, uh, we have the differentiation of the renewables targets and then some possibility of trading, but it's not used actually uh, at all. And then we have the, uh, uh, on the energy, uh, efficiency which that is non 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 binding uh, targets then on the ets which i think is the most kind of discussed we have the distribution of allowances uh, so 88 percent is distributed according to emissions but the rest is uh, is either called on the solidarity or the early action the two percent that's that's one thing then of course we have the whole uh, um, very specific uh, uh, moment in the directive where we say, okay, if you're exposed to international competition as a sector, you will receive the allowances for free and carbon leakage um, for the energy intensive um, industries. Um, and uh, then there is the international credits, which we acknowledge in our carbon market report is actually was supposed to make the compliance cheaper. It's also creating problem with the current surplus. So it's not only economic crisis. It's also this. It was maybe uh, something to look at. Then we have the free allocation for the Article 10C, and then I mean, kind of the other side of the equation that the new entrants reserve that can be used for the for the uh, new projects. And in the meantime, we'll have the. Um, uh, financial framework, which is in the making, but hopefully will be finished under the Irish presidency. And then something that is very much overlooked, but we have the also country-specific recommendations, also on the climate and energy uh, issues. There. Um, I have time running out, but just maybe a few issues on the financing for the next uh, time. So apart from the MFF, I think we and the well-functioning ETS that would, could be used for the financing. The other thing that many people don't look at is the fossil fuel subsidies. We have quite many still in the EU. And, uh, and of course, we have the business opportunities out there in Brazil, in China, and so on. This is, you know, it's not direct financing, but that's what can help us to, to, to bring home. Um, I think these are obvious questions, and I'm happy to hear questions and then in discussion later on, but should we have one or more targets? I think we should have 
all three of them because none in singularity does not deliver on, on the on this uh, common principles. How do we leave uh, enough room of flexibility or differentiation between the member states vis-a-vis -vis the internal market? We have the business competitiveness, business saying, please make sure that the uh, energy price is as low as possible, but then how do we drive the energy efficiency if this is the case? So this is the long term versus short term. And of course, this is the whole discussion about the, the who is going to pay the bill and between the sectors, between the member states. And I'm finishing. Um, and this maybe it's, 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 uh, it's uh, very obvious. Uh, we plan to put something at the, but the, by the end of the year, the consultations are open. Uh, and uh, the, of course, the analytical work is, 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 uh, is underway. Okay, thank you. Thank <music> you.